we'll look at how do we know what forces we should include on an object's free body diagram for a given situation. So let's begin with a simple situation that we've already considered, a cart at rest on a track. So which of these eight forces do we include on our free body diagram? Well, to determine what forces I include on my FBD, there are two questions that I always ask myself. The first one addresses the field forces, and here's what it is. Is there a planet, a charge, or a magnet nearby? Now the second question is, is there anything touching the object right now? And that really addresses the contact forces. Jot these two down in your journal, and then we'll apply them in just a moment to our situation. All right, let's apply the two questions to this situation. First of all, is there a planet, a charge, or a magnet nearby? Well, of course, there's a planet nearby, so we'll always include the force of gravity. I'm going to sketch an outline of my object, a dot in the center, and then the force of gravity will be included on my free body diagram. I'm not going to worry about the electrostatic or magnetic forces because they don't apply in this situation. Now the second question is, is anything touching the object right now? And to address that, what I do is I run my finger around the out, outer edge of the object, in this case the cart, and I see what is touching the cart. Well, it looks to me there's only one thing touching the cart, that's the track that's holding it up. So we call this force, this support force, a normal force, and I'll include that on my free body diagram. Since the cart isn't accelerating up or down, the two forces must be equal in size, and that's it. Our free body diagram is complete. All right, got your journal ready? Let's try two examples in your journal. You can pause the video when you're ready to begin. Here's our first example. A mass is hanging on a string. All right, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and sketch the free body diagram for this situation under example one in your journal. Press pause while you write and then play when you're ready to check your answer. Well, hopefully your free body diagram looks something like this. Is there a planet nearby? Yes. So we have the force of gravity. Is anything touching the object? Well, only the rope that's holding it up, so we'll have a tension force. And since the mass doesn't, doesn't accelerate up or down, the two forces must be equal. All right, here's example two. A cart is moving to the right with a constant velocity. A cart is moving to the right with a constant velocity. Go ahead, in, under example two, sketch your free body diagram for the situation. Press pause while you write, and then uh, play when you're ready to check your answer. Is there a planet nearby? Yes, so the force of gravity should be included again. Is anything touching the cart right now? Well, the track is the only thing, so we'll have a normal force. Both gravity and normal forces sh should be the same length. Now, were you tempted to draw a force to the right? Well, sure, the cart is moving to the right, but just because an object is moving to the right doesn't mean that a force is needed to keep it moving rightward. Newton's first law says that objects coasting in motion at a constant velocity stay in motion, not because they need something pushing them, but because that's what objects in motion tend to do. So my free body diagram is complete. Now try this one on your own. When you're ready, you can answer below.